Ummah will not rise. This Ummah will not change until every single one of us gets off his backside and starts working. Understand, we are drowning and we need help. Wallahi, we need help. Youth are lost. Women are lost. We are lost. We need help. And we need to work together and stop thinking, brother, what can I do? You can do a lot. Everyone wants change, but no one's ready to pay the price. We give a lot of scraps. We give a lot of scraps. When we give charity, how much do you give? You give the money that you don't need. When we give clothes, you know, when they collect clothes for Syria and Sham, and then what clothes do we give? Be honest, what clothes do we give? The clothes you don't need anymore. Scraps, I don't need it, brother. Give it away. We give Allah scraps, and in return, what do we want? Firdaus al A'la, inshallah, man. Brother, come to the masjid. Join, join a Quran class. Start making some change. Brother, Allah, I'm very busy at work. Then we're drowning, we're drowning. And I'm telling you, all we need is people to care. Wallahi, if all you did was genuinely started caring, you see change. Brother, what do you do? What do you do that's good? Use that and help the Ummah. Brother tells me, Wallahi, brother tells me, listen man, Anna, I love my fishing. Fine, fine, Wallahi, you know what? I'm going to come with everyone today. Fine, you love fishing? Well, I love fishing. I can get fishing from Asha to Fajr. I say fine. Since you love your fishing and you go every single night and there's nothing on the face of the planet that I can do to change your mind, I say, Wallahi, fine. But I tell him, brother, listen, if you're going to go fishing, why not do this? Why not go to the masjid, find one of the many kids that's lost, has no big brother, his father. Why not take one of these kids and make him your pal, make him your buddy, take him with you, man. Imagine every person did this. Whatever it is that you take someone with you. Take one of these kids, let take him with you, take him to Aisha, then take him fishing, show him that look, you can have fun, you can do halal things, and stay off the street. And while you're doing whatever you do, you put your worm and your hook and your prawns or whatever film you're doing, talk to him. Say, look, subhanAllah, can you see this worm? It's the creation of Allah, and now this is gonna give you. Do it, bro, do whatever you do. But no one cares. Everyone's busy. Wake up, my brothers, wake up. Today you might think, you know what, I'm busy. One life there's going to come a day. One life there's going to come a day. Either your son's going to need it, your nephew's going to need it, one of your cousins is going to need it, or your brother's going to need it. Where are you going to run? And my last thing, I've spoken much, my last thing. It's my brother, I don't care what you do. I do, but it's figure of do whatever you want. Just don't leave your soul. Can you do that? Just don't leave your soul. Don't, don't, don't be in a prison. Don't take the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how shaitan works. How many of us have we heard this? Brother, how do you want me to pray and I have a girlfriend? Brother, how do you want me to pray and I go clubbing and I drink alcohol? See, do you see how shaitan works? Brother, explain something to me. Me drinking alcohol is haram, yes or no? So that's one wrong. How does me not praying make that right? How do two wrongs make a right? You drinking alcohol is one haram, but you not praying, Habibi, that's a whole new world. Nah, brother, you know, I heard that that's a sign of hypocrisy. No, that's not hypocrisy. And this burns me, you know. Some of the boys, they'll come to a drug dealer that does haram, right? Yeah, he sells drugs, he does haram, but he prays. So what do the boys do? Thinking it's wisdom. They pick on the only good thing he does. Brother, you're a hypocrite, man. Why? You do this and you do this, you do that and you pray. So what does the brother end up doing? What does the brother end up doing? Yeah, of course, he ends up leaving his salah. I think, wallah, brothers, thank you. Zatullah khairah. The only good that was in his life, you turned him away from it. 
You want to go clubbing, Akhi? Do you want to go clubbing? Go. But this is, this is my advice. Pray, Aisha, and then leave. You know what's funny? My brothers, you and I laugh. We turn people off Salah. Why? Because you think that deen is according to what's in your mind. Brother, two wrongs don't make a right. You pray no matter what. Your prayer is between you and Allah and no man can stand between it. Pray. I don't care what it is. Pray. Brother, tell me, brother, I heard that if you drink alcohol, that your prayer is not accepted for 40 days. Brother, what film Hindi is this? Where did you get that from? But that's how shaitan turns you off deen. So I say, even if that's the case, let's say drinking alcohol means that you can't pray for 40 days. Is it really worth it? Is that cup that you're going to drink, is that worth 40 days of your life? I can't pray. Babe, is it worth it? No, you can pray no matter what's happening. Allah simply says in the Quran, do not come to prayer while you're in the state of intoxication. When you sober up and you know the difference between right and wrong, have you become straight back to salah?